In this short video, we will be addressing the parameters, choices, and reasoning for choosing the correct detergent for cleaning in your premises. This is not an exhaustive or prescriptive treatise on the subject, but rather a simple guide to assist with making informed choices. A detergent is a chemical designed to assist with the removal of soil, dirt, and grease. The mode of action is to either chemically change the soil or to emulsify debris, lifting it from the surface and getting it into suspension, thereby enabling it to be removed to the drain. Detergents may be alkaline, acidic, or neutral in nature, which helps determine their mode of action. A typical detergent will contain some common components, a base, surfactant, and a sequestrant. In addition, some formulations of detergent may contain a chlorine donor to assist with protein removal or stain removing or an inhibitor to minimize damage to the food contact surface. The chemical base is the component that actually reacts with the soil. As an example, fats and oils will be saponified, effectively made into soap by alkaline detergents. Proteins may be hydrolyzed by chlorinated detergents and acidic formulations will remove mineral scale. Surfactants a contraction of the term surface acting agent are included to wet and penetrate the soil and suspend the deposit in solution. These surfactants are ionic in nature and when in dilution come in three varieties. Anionic surfactants ionize in solution to give a negative charge. They are the most commonly used with good wetting properties. Amphoteric surfactants are mild in nature with good biocidal properties and will ionize as either a positive or negative charge depending on the pH of the solution. Cationic surfactants ionize with a positive charge and are commonly used in disinfectants. They are high foaming with poor wetting properties. Let's consider how detergents interact with different soiling. When looking to remove fat or oil-based residues, an alkaline-based detergent is often the formulation of choice although if the soiling is light, a neutral detergent may also be employed. An alkaline detergent will saponify the fat or oil, effectively turning it into soap, which is easy to remove. Where a protein is also present, then a chlorinated alkaline detergent may be employed to assist with the removal. When looking at removing a light soil, then a neutral detergent will emulsify the soiling, suspending it in solution. Protein or starch soiling can be approached in a couple of ways, acidic or chlorinated alkaline. An acidic detergent will hydrolyze the proteins. However, the strength of the detergent will need to be monitored as the acidity will be consumed during the reaction, which may lead to an incomplete clean. Commonly, a chlorinated alkaline detergent will be applied as a foam or gel to enable large areas to be covered quickly. Once again, proteins and starches will be hydrolyzed and this formulation of detergent is often employed to both clean and remove proteins in one step. With debris including blood or staining, salad processing for example, a chlorinated alkaline is often used and applied again as either a foam or gel. The formulation will bleach out the color of the stain combined with the hydrolyzing of the debris. Often physical input from a green or blue pad is also needed to ensure an effective clean. Carbon is chemically inert and unreactive, so removal requires breaching the physical layer to access the organic debris which is adhering to the deposit to the surface. This breaching is best achieved using physical action, often by scraper, pressurized jets, or in extreme circumstances, blasting with sand or dry ice. Mineral scale may be deposited onto surfaces as a result of the hardness of the water, for example, on the east coast of the UK, from calcium deposits from milk, so-called milkstone, or mineral deposits from beer production, beer stone. Removal is commonly using acidic detergent, however the acidity present is consumed during the reaction, meaning that the concentration must be monitored during cleaning and may need topping up to ensure an effective clean is achieved. The use of acidic detergents to remove rust and corrosion staining is common, and again, the concentration needs to be monitored to ensure an effective strength is maintained. These acids may be organic in nature or based on aggressive products such as hydrofluoric acid, and as such may need specific handling precautions to avoid exposing the operative to additional risk. Now let's review the compatibility of detergents and the common materials of construction used in our industry. 
This table gives an overview of the compatibility of the common classes of detergent with commonly encountered materials used to manufacture our processing equipment. In this short video, there is insufficient time to fully cover this table, so may we suggest you examine the detail using the table in guideline 55. That said, in general terms, if your plant is constructed of stainless steel, then your choice of detergents is more extensive than if you have soft metals or aluminium present. Now to applying the detergents. There's a variety of methods for applying the detergent, from manual, using a bucket and brush, through foam application, to automatic cleaning in tray washers or CIP installations. For more extensive information and guidance on application techniques, please refer to the relevant sections of Guideline 55. Thank you for your attention and interest in this subject, and please refer to the guideline for more detail.